Welcome to the Blogger Genius Podcast brought to you by Milo Tree. Here's your host, Jillian Leslie. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the show. When this goes live, I don't know where we will be in social distancing, but right now we are smack dab in the middle of it, and it feels good to be recording this because it's something that I do every week, and it makes me feel A, in control, and B, like things are normal. So I don't know about you, but I have found that the best thing I can do during this really uneasy time is to do things that feel familiar. Even if they're not necessarily fun things, I do look forward to all of the little tasks I need to do for my businesses. And I'm curious to know if you feel the same way. If in fact you are looking for community as we are isolated, please join my Facebook group. Head to Facebook, go to the Milo Tree Mastermind group, and please be a part of it. I'm in there all the time and I'm really trying hard to build a positive, supportive, fun community. So I welcome you. For today's episode, I am interviewing Susie Karache, and she started the food blog, The Mediterranean Dish, and works with her husband, and we get into what it's like to be in a niche, Mediterranean food, um, in the world of food blogging, and she does it all. You will be incredibly impressed with all that Susie and her husband do to run their business. What I, though, found the most satisfying was toward the middle to the end of the podcast, we start talking about burnout, and Susie's really honest and talks about what it takes to be in it day in and day out, kind of like the grind of it, and I think that... This is why I love doing this podcast because I get to have these real conversations with people and not just talk about the superficial stuff, but talk about the struggles, talk about the challenges, and talk about the successes. Without further ado, I think you're going to really like this episode. Here is my interview with Susie Karache. Susie, welcome to the show. Hey, so glad to be here, Jillian. Thanks for having me. So we met, wow, like a little less than a year ago at an Ad Thrive conference and you were there with your husband Mm -hmm. and what I was so impressed with was how quickly you guys had built your business. Oh, thank you. It doesn't feel that quick. (laughs) I know, like everything, but I do think there is something to like you just stay at it, stay at it, stay at it. And ultimately then, whoa, you have a big business. Yes. Yes. We're, we're so blessed and, and we've had a lot of help along the way. So yeah. Okay, cool. Well, let's, so let's talk. So you are, um, I would call you a niche food blogger. Yes, that's correct. So Susie, tell me how you guys started your food blog what was the inspiration and where are you today? Uh, sure. Yeah. So it was about, uh, I think the year was 2014 ish okay. end of that year. Okay. And, um, it actually started more as a hobby and something for me to do, uh, because I had just kind of come off from working full time and had decided to stay home, uh, with, uh, my one year old at the time we had moved from my husband's work. So, Uh, I just didn't have a job at the time lined up. And after doing some consulting and whatnot, I kind of felt like I needed something more to do. Uh, So it was really kind of my, my, my connection to the outside world, my way of just being able to do something more than being a stay at home mom. So where, so where are you from? And then like, I know you have a Mediterranean background. So talk about how that inspired your food. Yeah, sure. So when we sat down to think about um, putting together a food blog, um, I said to my husband, listen, I only know how to cook Mediterranean food. Um, I am from Port Said, Egypt, a a cosmopolitan city right on the Mediterranean. Uh, I had learned all sorts of Mediterranean flavors just from the neighboring Mediterranean countries. And I had traveled to parts of the Mediterranean. So 
I love these flavors that I grew up with and it's the only thing I know how to do. So we decided to uh, do that niche blog around Mediterranean food and we called it the Mediterranean dish. Great. Okay. So you are home and you're starting to cook and take photographs and post them on your blog. Yes. I mean, it wasn't very sophisticated at the time. It was just like, hey, here's what I cooked for lunch today. And here's a really crappy photo taken with a cell phone Mm. (laughs) and uh, not a whole lot of words, really. Sometimes we just put a recipe up and leave it because it was really more of a hobby. It was not I did not think about it as a business until uh, oh late 2016 and what made you go huh we could turn this into a real business yeah sure so we were on our second move for my husband's career he's he was an insurance executive and we moved again to atlanta georgia and at that point i realized like we keep moving i can't hold a job full-time job anymore and uh why don't i make a go of this blogging thing and so it was the fall of 2016 i started getting involved in some blogging groups i started picking up information and learning a little bit more about how to turn this thing into a business and i was thinking you know what i'll make a little bit of money you know for my shoe fund Mm -hmm. (laughs) I i wasn't thinking that it was gonna be you know the mediterranean dish that that it is today so i was just kind of like i had smaller goals i i still just was thinking it'd be great if I could make a little bit of money. Now, and that when, was- now, okay, now your husband though now is home with you working on your business. Yes, he just joined me uh, a few months ago. Uh, we've been working together full time and uh, we have grown the blog from a blog to like an, a resource for all things Mediterranean cooking. So we have our own um, spices and olive oils and other Mediterranean ingredients that are are private labeled, so to speak, that we sell through our e-commerce site. So that has been his uh, passion, and he's been growing that part of the business, uh, you know, beyond the recipes. So when did you say? Okay, so first of all, you monetize then via ads, because I know, because we were both yeah. at that Ad Thrive conference, yes. and through selling products. Yes. Are there any other ways you're monetizing? Uh, Yeah, sure. I mean, I've done occasional, um, you know, brand work and sponsorships and and that kind of thing. Uh, But I've really just in the past year been focused more on growing our own brand. And so I've taken a step back uh, and I'm kind of selective with the brands I work with only because I have a specific niche and it needs to work for my uh, readers. So it's just been a blessing to be able to say no to things that did not uh, mesh well with my niche and to be able to say yes to the things that are, uh, you know, that are, that make sense for my readers. Now, in in terms of income, are you making more money blogging through ads or selling your products? Where is more of your revenue coming from? More of the revenue is still from ads at this point in time, but the uh, product line, which is only about a year and a half old at this point, and we started very small, uh, that's picking up quite a bit now. So we're, we're trying to move um, to a better place with that, but it's been really a fun journey and, and it's a little complicated. So <laughs> Yeah, so let's talk about that. So you said... Okay, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but my hunch is you said, hey, we're making all this cool Mediterranean food. Uh, you know, there's this need for, and by the way, I have to just tell you that Mediterranean food is my favorite kind of food. Like, I love it. I love it, love it, love it. So when I was looking, doing research uh, for questions for you and I was on your blog, like my mouth was yeah. watering. Oh, thank you. That means a lot. I'm so glad. Truly. Okay, so then you thought to yourself, hey, like maybe there aren't a lot of Mediterranean spices out there. Maybe we could fill this market. Like what were you thinking? Yeah, so it, it the whole idea came from my readers, really. They kept emailing. This was now late 2017-ish that people have been like, where do you get your olive oils? Where do I find za'atar? I don't know what sumac is. Um, and I realized that people really do need 
a place that they can go that where they feel that they're getting the better quality ingredients and uh, that they can cook these recipes without fail. Uh, and they don't have to, you know, run to the store because they ha they don't have the one ingredient. Got it. Uh, Got and it. oftentimes some of these were not really available to people, especially if you're in a smaller city. And so uh, it got us started on just researching how we can make this happen for people. Um, and uh, we got connected to uh, a couple of uh, uh, family owned olive groves in Greece, mm -hmm. and they continue to supply us with, I believe, the best uh, extra virgin olive oils that I've tried so far. So we've been really just a great partnership with them uh, through a contact here that we got to know. Uh, and then we started researching the spices and found a great resource um, for that. And, and so now we've expanded. We've just added things like couscous and tahini and other things that we're partnering with different people to make sure are available for our audience. So it's really been a journey and we took it super slow. So we're kind of more of, of a boutique type online shop where we kind of introduce one item at a time that we feel confident is the best fit for our audience. Now, are uh, you are you storing inventory? Like is your garage filled with olive oil? Uh, no, <laughs> that's a great question. So we actually do have a, a large um, um, uh, basement that we have some of the supplies there, but we also have been working to move into a bigger storage space. Uh, and the deal is we you, you kind of have to make sure that these things are stored in a certain temperature. It needs to be dark uh, and all that. So we, we are, we're working on that quite a bit right now and and we like what we have but we know that we're kind of outgrown the space that we've built sp especially for it so we're looking for a new space <laughs> wow okay so you though are holding the inventory you're not like drop shipping or using like a packing company that you know you're no we, we have a team that fulfills the orders so we have a shipping team a couple of people that uh are responsible for that and um we we try to look into uh, a third party fulfillment mm. type mm -hmm. situation and we just did not feel comfortable at the time with the options that were available um so and we're very quick with our shipping and we have a certain process so it's really hard to kind of let go of that at this point in time uh, but if we ever outgrow it, we'll, we hope to find the right partner to do that with. Got it. And what platform, for example, like Shopify or what platform do you sell on or platforms? Uh, yeah, so we ha we work with uh, Shippo um, okay. and our, our uh, site is uh, shop.themediterraneandish.com. So it's a subdomain of our existing domain. Um, but is it like a yeah. Shopify store? What? Yes, something a lot. You know what? I can't even remember because we went back and forth okay. <laughs> on which place. But I believe it is a Shopify. Um, yeah. Now, are you selling on Amazon? Uh, we are not at this point yet um, because we keep running out of inventory. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good problem to have. Yeah. So we're, uh, like I said, we're still feeling things out. It's, it's, even though it's been, um, more than a year that we've been working on this, we still are feeling things out. And, and, uh, so what we do is because we want to provide the best, uh, most fresh ingredients to people, we try to not hold a huge inventory. We try to have things packaged to order as much as possible, like small batch type situation. And we've quickly outgrown that model. Um, so when we call our uh, olive oil person, for example, and we say, we, we ran out of the early harvest, what do we do? And she'll be like, well, you're going to have to wait for the harvest now. <laughs> so we've learned to kind of, we're, we're still learning how to inventory things, how to make sure we keep just enough, but not too much. Uh, so that's part of that journey. And as soon as we feel confident that we can fulfill or if we have a partner to work with, we probably go to Amazon later on. But right now it's just all through our own site. Um, 
and it's been it's been exciting that's very cool okay do you offer free shipping uh we cannot do that <laughs> at this point in time but we have a very small flat rate i think it's like five dollars or something that kind of doesn't even cover our costs right right but it's something that allows us to like offset uh, some of the costs that we incur. So, right. But, but isn't the kind of model today, you bake the shipping into the cost of your product? Uh, some places do that. And we kind of toyed with the idea back and forth. And we just wanted our, our products, the cost of the product to us is higher than what you would even find at the store on the shelf because we try to carry the best quality. So our margins are not that huge. And we didn't feel like we should jack up the margins so much in order to include the shipping and everything else. We didn't want that, I guess, the price tag to discourage people from trying something really good. Got it. Um, so we've kind of like kind of played with where is that balance? And so we obviously do have a markup on our um, on our uh, uh, products just because we need to, and then we have a small, tiny shipping fee that allows people to kind of be like, oh, you know, that's not too bad. Right. I can do right. it. But we ship super quickly, uh, so people are able to get their stuff within like a couple of days, and we've had a really good experience so far. We haven't had so much, you know, breakage, I suppose, of, of products or any of that because we've been able to control the process so well uh, so far. Got it. Now, do you test products? Like, have you had any products that like you thought would be really successful and then they weren't or products that you didn't really feel like this is going to work and then it worked? Like, how do you determine yes. what products to sell? Yeah. So uh, like I said, we start, we introduce one thing at a time and we um, hold very small inventory of that particular product. So for example, just recently we introduced uh, a lentils bundle because people kept saying, well, my store doesn't carry lentils. So the more we hear, it's basically just crowdsourcing, hearing from our readers what they need. And when they tell us they need something, we go after it mm. and we test run it for a bit and to see if oh, are we running out of inventory? Nobody's ordering this, nobody, you know, and we kind of test uh, at that point how well something will go. And if it does, then we carry it more permanently. So we'll introduce something for a short time uh, and we'll see. So far we've been, we've had great luck because we've been very calculated as far as which products we introduced next. Um, and we've, yeah, we've not had any, I don't think we've had any product that didn't do well for us so far. Imagine growing your Instagram followers with no work highly engaged followers. Now imagine it with Pinterest, Facebook, YouTube. How about new email subscribers? Seriously, no work. This is all possible if you install the MyloTree pop-up on your blog. David, my husband and I started our blog, Catch My Party, in 2009. We've since grown it into the largest party idea site on the web with millions of page views per month. We did it with hard work and our secret weapon, our MyloTree pop-up, which David built for us. We've grown our Pinterest followers to over 1.3 million and our Instagram followers to over 164,000. And right now, 8,000 other bloggers just like you are using MyloTree to grow their businesses. With MyloTree, you can focus on growing one platform or switch between several. But here is the important thing. If you aren't converting your visitors into followers, subscribers, and customers, you're honestly wasting your own traffic. Make this asset, your visitors, work for you. Since we're bloggers, we get bloggers. So we've optimized MyloTree like crazy. It's a snap to install. It won't slow your site down. It's Google friendly on mobile and it's so darn cute. You can even add animated sparkles to your pop-up if you like. Sign up now and get your first 30 days for free. Please pause this episode and head to MyloTree.com to sign up. I know you will thank me. As a bonus, once you sign up, I'm going to send you weekly actionable business tips to help you grow your business. I've been at this a long time and I have a lot to share. 
Remember, your scarcest resource is not money, it's time. So let MyLotry free up time for you so you can focus on the other important parts of your business. So what are you waiting for? Hit pause, head to MyLotry and sign up today. Now, how do you manage both sides of your business? I know your husband is doing the store, but in terms of getting the message out, are you actively, like, do you have a list for your store? Do you have a list for your blog? Like where, how does that all work? How do you get people to find out about your products, find out about your site? Right, sure. Um, So, I mean, we were on all social media, obviously, and we have a pretty healthy list, uh, email list. I believe we're nearly at 80,000. Wow. We could do better. Um, but I mean, we have, we've been cleaning up our list. So we have an engaged audience and, uh, that's been where the greatest return on an email list has been for us is when you reach out to that very particular audience who is super engaged with you, uh, you know, usually you get the sales like super quickly. So I send out a couple emails a week and they're not necessarily just about the store. They're about the recipes mainly. And then by the way, you know, this recipe will use this ingredient. And if you don't have it, you can find it here. So it's not really a salesy situation. And I feel like it has served us well in that people know the intention here is for us to serve them and not to sell them. Uh, so that's been a huge, uh, a huge way in, in, in making sure that people felt comfortable shopping our store uh, because they saw it more as a service and not so much a salesy pitch. Interesting. Now, what yeah. social platforms work for you? Um, interestingly, Facebook and Instagram have been doing really well for me. I haven't used Pinterest so much to direct traffic to the shop, uh, but obviously we use it you know, to direct traffic to our recipes. And from there, once somebody gets to a recipe, I link out to all the products so that they're able to find, you know, this particular spice or this particular, you know, tahini paste or whatever. Uh, So we get quite a bit also just from people visiting a particular recipe and they'll just click on what, you know, product they need. And from there, we kind of, you know, harness that. (laughs) Great. Okay. So how then, let's go through face, if you would, Facebook and Instagram. How are you using Facebook? How are you using Instagram? Um, in general, Facebook, I usually, uh, schedule, I'm very kind of picky about what goes on my social media account. So I'm not someone who kind of floods people with, uh, 15, 20 posts a day. I am probably generally between five and seven posts on Facebook and they're mostly heavy, uh, toward recipes. And once in a while I'll pop in and say, Hey, we've got this new product at the store and I'll usually get some sales from that. So it's a really good balance of like, you know, serve, 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 serve the people and then sell to them Mm -hmm. uh, at some point later. So, uh, and usually if somebody, like I said, pops into a recipe, they will stumble upon the shop. We have uh, all sorts of links to the shop on the site. So, okay. And how about Instagram? Uh, for Instagram, I'm probably about once or once a day type posts. <laughs> I'm not very, I don't do three or four posts a day. I do only my own content and I do a few stories. And in the stories, I will usually point to whatever product I'm working with today and show people how to make something. And I could do a lot better with Instagram, but with the time I have, it has worked out real well. And are you doing uh, stories every day? Um, I should. <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're at 110,000 followers on Instagram, and I feel like I could really do a better job engaging them. Um, our stories get a lot of views. I just sometimes forget to do them. So I get it. I get it. Yeah. So let's talk about then how you manage kind of creating recipes. I know yeah. your husband is predominantly doing the store. Yes. So who is like who is helping you with social media, recipes, photography, all of that stuff? Um, okay, so for social media, I have 
um, an assistant, a stay at home mom, who's a good friend of mine, who I've trained on uh, Facebook and push notifications and a little bit of Pinterest. I have an amazing VA for Pinterest because that's, that's a big job. (laughs) So I have somebody else working mainly just on Pinterest. Um, and on Instagram, I manage that myself, um, because, because of the nature of the platform. So I'm usually the one doing Instagram at this point in time, as far as recipe development, photography and writing, that's all me at this point. Um, so I take all my photos, I develop all the recipes and I do the writing. (laughs) And how many recipes are you putting out? At this point, we are between three and four recipes per week. Whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa. Is that, is that? That's less? a lot. That's, in, <laughs> okay, so you are literally coming up with, that you're doing recipe development, and yeah. then you are cooking the recipes, Yes. taking the photos, writing the blog posts, like optimizing them for keywords, SEO, that kind of thing. Yeah. Are you also doing video? Yes, ma'am. Ooh, wait, explain. <laughs> yeah, video, How are you doing that? Favorite. Um, so we started, we initially, like most other bloggers, started with the hands and pans type videos, the quick 60 second ones. And we've moved now to doing like video episodes where I am personally cooking and talking to people. So it's more cooking show style videos. We've been doing that for over a year now, and it's been my favorite thing to do. Oh, like, wait, I so explain how it. this works. Okay, so let's say you're going to do three recipes this week, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what recipes they're going to be? Mm-hmm. And yeah. then explain how you are creating the recipe and video taping it and taking photographs. Yeah, so um, I'll back up a minute here because the way that we do video is a little bit different. We actually shoot with a team of uh Uh, people who come here and videotape and they will edit everything so we have to fit in a number of videos per day we started with eight videos and that was just too much in one day so now we're down to five videos so before these guys come I will assess which five videos need uh, we need for you know this particular shoot so it might be a combination of like maybe an older couple of older recipes that really need a nicer push and a video usually will help that and then a few of the newer recipes that are developed that will be published next month and so we kind of videotape ahead of time for the new recipes and we usually pick up a couple of older recipes that we can revamp and add the video to so that's how we do the video now how, wait how often then is your video team coming and shooting these videos uh, they come once a month okay. Um, and we shoot five videos and they will edit them through the month and I'll usually get like different cuts of a particular video so it would fit on Instagram and YouTube and Facebook and the blog. Got uh, it. And so- how long are these videos? Uh, we are now anywhere between six and ten minutes. Are you for- putting them also on YouTube? Yes. Yes, they and are. Is mm-hmm. YouTube working for you? Uh, it's pretty new. We have, but we're reaching, I think 10,000 subscribers. So it's one of our smallest channels. Uh, but we've been able to grow it pretty quickly just this year. Once we've started making more of an effort. Uh, so we were at a thousand ish earlier this year when we decided it was going to be a goal. So we grew like 9,000 in a year, which That's that's amazing maybe is not as quick as you would see in other social media i feel uh, but youtube is a new animal to me and i don't know that i un- understand it fully but since we have the videos we've made an effort to be more consistent and it has paid off in kind of enrolling new subscribers um so we'll see i we don't really know how well we're doing on video got it <laughs> or youtube but but we're doing it because, as you know, with everything that you start in blogging, you just have to kind of keep at it for a while yes. before you decide, is it the right thing for you? And we feel like it might be, and it's more of a long-term uh, marathon rather than a race. Well, if right? you're doing the videos, um, yeah. 
it kind of makes and and you're having your editors cut different sizes so are you also putting it up on like IGTV yes yes I do that okay Mm -hmm. so you've got like IGT so you're taking a video yes uh, you're putting it on IGTV you're putting it on Instagram like in your feed yes you're putting it on YouTube Facebook any place else I'm uploading them to Pinterest now. And Pinterest, terrific. Yeah. Okay. And so, um, and so now when you do this day of five videos in one day, is it, what is that day like? Crazy. (laughs) It's really, really hard. Um, it, it got better now. I think it takes a minute to kind of get in the groove and your team knows you well enough to, you know, so we have a good system now. I prep for all these videos ahead of time. So I have what you need chopped up or whatever. And it's a balance of like, how much do I do on camera and how much do I prep in advance? Uh, if a recipe is too long, I might cook the whole thing once and then do it again on camera. So it's the prep work that really gets me every time. It's a lot of work. Uh, but if you prep well, then the day goes pretty smoothly and it's one recipe after another. And, and you know, we just go at it. Um, wow. And how many people are there on recipe day, on video recipe day? On video day now, we have uh, two or three camera people. We have my husband. He kind of stays behind and kind of directs the show. And I have somebody who might come in just to help clean up and do, uh, you know, just pick up after me so I can go change. (laughs) Oh, right. For each video. Yeah. So, yeah, we have anywhere between five. Yeah, probably between four and five people. And how long does it take? Just not in terms of prep, but in terms of video right. day to Actual get day. through to get through one video. Yeah, so uh, we start pretty early in the morning. The guys are usually here at seven. They set up. We're usually shooting by eight o'clock, eight thirty at the latest, uh, and we have a nice long day. Maybe it takes us through five o'clock. Um, so if you have five videos, some of them will be quick, like if it's a salad and it doesn't need a ton of time, we can get through that in a half hour. And some of them will take you know, an hour or so, but we shoot for about an hour per video. Uh, and then we have the setup and tear down. I am so impressed. And then who is your assistant? The one who's then uploading all the videos to the right platforms, that kind of thing. Uh, at this point in time, it's a mix of a couple of us. Like I, I will, I'll do the very first post of any video for Facebook and she'll take it from there and like republish it as needed. Uh, so I usually upload the first batch and then leave it from there um, to the different VAs. Okay, so you are then, when are you taking the photographs for the recipes? Usually because the, because I know when my next video shoot is, I will prepare like a few weeks in advance what recipes will I be shooting. And I'll take the pictures, you know, a few weeks ahead Uh so that they're ready. Got it. And then you're writing the blog post. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you're writing the email newsletters. Yes, (laughs) (laughs) ma'am. Okay. How many hours a week are you working on your business? I don't even want to think about it, Jillian. Okay. Okay. (laughs) But I try, I really am trying to be super balanced about things. So I have easier days and harder days. I try to batch work. Um, so the videos are obviously batched because I only have that one team for one day. Right. So I, right. I have to do them all at once. I usually cook, uh, three or so afternoons every week and I'll take my photos at that time while I'm testing, testing the recipes, uh, because sometimes they turn out really great and I don't need to retest them. So I'll take the photos right away. So I have them if that's the case, um, So I've tried to find efficiencies where I could. I have hired some assistants with just editing and so forth, uh, like when I write a blog post. Um, I have someone who might write for me once in a while when I get in a bind, but I really like to have my own voice. So it hasn't been something that I felt comfortable giving away yet as far as the writing goes, but it might be. Do you experience burnout? All the time. And what do you do? Um, I cry. (laughs) (laughs) I play with my puppy. Um, well, 
in all honesty, I just kind of feel it when I have bigger weeks. So last week was one of our video weeks and that is a big week for me because I have to do all the things plus I have to be on camera. Right. And after that was done, I kind of took a day off to decompress. I need I needed it so bad. Uh, so I just know when it's coming and I try to pause uh, and rest for a little bit and then pick it back up. Got it. Yeah, I get it. I mean, I think that's really honest. I, I feel the same way. There are times when things come easily and I am jamming and then there are times I feel like I'm moving through molasses. Yes. And I cannot yes. get like there is like I feel such a headwind. Yes. Um, yes. And what I have found is to kind of ride them through to know uh, that that this will pass and mm-hmm. to ready. And for me, it is, and it's really hard for me to do this, but when I am struggling to touch myself with as much kindness as I possibly can. Yes, yes. I think giving ourselves grace is maybe one of the hardest things about this job because we feel like we have to do all the things all the time. Um, and there's a lot to do. And there's always something new that, you know, you have to get done. And there's new stuff to learn. Yeah. Yeah. So it feels, so, I mean, you know, you're this, you, there are like, I feel like I wear so many different hats that, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I can, I'm tending to this and then, oh, wait, there's a fire over here. And then, you know, that um, I always say that, it, and again, I mean, you sound like you are very organized and that you have to be and I would say we are too but it's amazing how um my day I can have my whole day planned out and then it gets hijacked because there's some problem in some area that I need to attend to yeah and and it's better now that my husband is with me because sometimes I can offload that to him and and be on my way to do something else so that helps to have somebody um but i will say this i am never so far ahead i know that there are bloggers out there who are able to have content all planned out for six or seven weeks i'm not that person so i i just want to be so honest there are days that i'm writing a blog post that gets published on that day yep because that's just the nature of that week uh and in fact that's actually most of the time i'm writing on the day that it has to go out and how about you how about emails are you writing those on the fly sometimes sometimes if i have an extra hour the night before i might write them but honestly it is i know what's coming it just doesn't get done that quickly (laughs) yeah i again i i am the first to admit that i have spreadsheets out the wazoo and I use them and at the same time I'm flying by the seat of my pants yeah so I just wanted to share that because I feel like when people hear that you're publishing four blog posts and you're doing five videos and you're doing you know this and that with YouTube they they think that you've got it all figured out it is hardly the case and it's a day-by-day process for me uh to be very honest it's hard and we should all just give ourselves grace because there will be people who are doing better, who are who have their schedules really tidy and are able to work, you know, 16 hours a day. And that may not be me. And uh, it took me a while to get to this point, Jillian. Like, it, it's hard. Yeah. Not to compare, you know. But here's the thing, which is, do you feel it's worth it? I, I believe so. I think for me, the turning point in taking this from like just a hobby or a shoe fund type thing to a real business that is our sole income now as a family of four, the turning point was when I focused on, okay, I'm going to be consistently producing new recipes. I'm going to be consistently writing and no more of this like, you know, I'll publish this week and not next. Right. So until you get to the point of like being consistent, whatever consistent looks like for you, it might be just one post a week, but you're doing it, you will see a return on that investment. So for me, it has, it has, yeah, it's helped a lot. I, I, I'm, I'm with you. And how is it then being a mom running this business with your husband in your house? Yeah. All of that. What is that like? Um, we, we, uh, we struggle, (laughs) Mm -hmm. to 
completely honest because it's like the two of us and our heads are together all the time and we're talking business all the time. So dinner time sometimes is hijacked. I'm not proud of it. Mm. Um, but we have an older daughter who's very good about telling us to stop blogging while we're at the table mm. and to just, uh, you know, be present. So the kids really do hold us accountable. And we have to pause and do what we need to do as a family. Uh, and we're a work in progress. We are, yeah. <laughs> are trying. we all? Are we yeah. all? I get it. I get it. Because I work with my husband, David, as well. Yeah. And yeah. there are times where we are working and we are, you know, we are partners, business partners. And then at the yeah. end of the day, even though he's like right across the way from me the whole day, It'll get to be the end of the day and I'll look at him and I'll go, I miss you. Yeah. Like yeah. we just need to laugh about something to yeah. be like, oh, right, we're husband and wife here. Yeah. Yeah. So that that part is really difficult to do. And we try to separate our workspace from our life space, so to speak. Um, it doesn't work out always, but I think you just have to continue to make the effort. Uh, and that that's where we are today. Yeah, I, I get it. You know, my mom is very wise and she always says that you're never in balance. You move through balance into imbalance and then you course correct. And then you, again, you move through balance and again, yeah. something else is, you know, you're never getting your ducks fully in a row. Yeah. And I, I think the hardest part for me is uh, coming to a point where I'm okay not having my ducks in a row. Right. And that's right. when I actually felt like I can do this job. Because I, I know I'm never going to be ahead, uh, but it's working just fine. Um, my process is different than, than somebody else's, and it's working for me. Um, and yeah. And the thing I always share is it's messy. Yeah, absolutely. Like, right? Like when you're doing recipes and you're like, you're taking photographs and the photo looks beautiful and two inches to the left and two inches to the right is mess. Yeah, <laughs> that that's a good way to put it <laughs> but that photo is beautiful so it looks magical but if you could see what the magic really looks like in real life yeah you yeah. know I say this to my daughter my daughter is is almost 13 and I've said this from the beginning I would be taking photographs like and by the way the photo looks beautiful and I would call her in and I'd go I want you to see something and I'd like make her look like look at the photo and then I'd go do you see this do you see all this mess this is what Instagram is really like so when you see all these beautiful people on Instagram know yeah. that two inches to the left and two inches to the right it's a big hot mess and it does not look like it does yes like this is smoke and mirrors Yes, and that's a great reminder, especially for our daughters. Um, it's it's a hard world out there, social media wise, and and um, we all put our best foot forward. And I think that we forget, as an audience, that other people are putting their best foot forward too, and we're not seeing the rest of the behind the scenes mess. Right. Um, you know. Right. Right. And I appreciate you sharing the mess you know because it's real <laughs> it's real yeah, um, yeah so now if somebody out here somebody is listening to this episode and they go oh my god I have this idea for a product like a physical good even like a food product or something that yeah. I want to sell yeah what would be your advice to them um I would say do all the research that you can um it took a we we've been like I said very slow about it and we never come out super strong with any new product. We test it. We try it with our closest people. Um, so I would say do all the research you can. Research you know, your partners that you're gonna work with as far as where this product is gonna be sourced from. Uh, try a few different places. Don't just go with the first one that you like. Um, I would say solidify your niche first. Uh, so if you're, you know, like I happen to be lucky enough that my niche is Mediterranean food and my people told me what they're needing. Uh, so I would say like for anybody out there, think about your own brand. What is, what is it that people come to your site for? And then see how you can supplement that with a product that makes sense for you. I like, so we can, you know, we can't all be selling the same thing. 
you know, because other people, like I know some friends of mine, their product is basically, you know, eBooks. And they do an amazing job for, for with that because, uh, you know, they're really good with meal planning and they can add a ton of tips and they can add a ton of, uh, you know, shopping lists and things that people need. And they're all online products and they're not even touching the whole food, uh, you know, product because there is a side of that that's, you know, you've got to have the insurance for and you've got, it's really layers and layers of work. So pick the product that works best for your audience and for you that you can comfortably sell and not sell that you can comfortably offer as a service to your audience. I like that. Now, uh, one thing that I like that you said is you listen to your audience when they've got a problem because they can't find a product, you see an opportunity in solving that problem for them. Yes, exactly. And, and I don't know if we could have been successful if we hadn't been thinking about our audience first uh, and how we can serve them best. And we really, honestly, when we got into this product side of things, we did not go after it for profit initially. Obviously, we do want to make money, uh, but we wanted to do something that really did help our people. And from there, it kind of just mushrooms. So, right. um, some people are really good at what they do. Uh, so know what you're really good at and then package it in such a way that serves your audience. Right. You know, it's, uh, it reminds me for catch my party, which is our big party site. Yeah. What we did as a service is, you know, so we have a lot of user generated content. People upload their party photos and what yeah. we, we have a vendor directory, a lot of Etsy vendors. And as a service, we started pulling the Etsy products onto our site so people could find cool party supplies. And this was before Etsy had any sort of affiliate program. So we were wow. just doing this yeah. as a way to make it easier for people to plan parties. Yeah. Then it turned out a couple years later, Etsy came out with their affiliate program and we were able to turn it on. But yeah. it started from a need of saying, how can we just offer this? Up? We were making nothing on yeah. offering products um, and it, it ended up working in our favor, but that was not how it started. Yeah, and I think you touched on a very good point here. It is all about user experience. That's what they tell us now as far as SEO even is yes. concerned right for the user, help the user, Uh, think of your product in the same way. What does this do for the user experience? Does it help them to go to some other site to buy a product? Do it. Does it help them to buy the product right here on my site because I'm the only one who can provide the best product in this particular niche? Then do that. Um, So I, I really don't feel like It's for everybody launching your own food product. It is a beast to take on, um, to be honest, and it won't make money for a while. But if it is for you and your audience, do it, you know? I love that. I love that advice. Okay, Susie, if people want to reach out to you, learn more about you, how can they do that? Uh, Well, I'm on the MediterraneanDish.com. All my contact information is there. So if you go there, you can send me an email. Uh, And I am on Facebook as the Mediterranean Dish, on Instagram as add the Mediterranean Dish. Uh, So those are the main places that I hang out right now. Well, Susie, I'm so glad I met you, gosh, almost a year ago. And I'm so, I, I love what you've shared today. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. I love talking to you and I hope this will help somebody out there. (laughs) Absolutely. Episodes like this are some of my favorite because you get the whole picture. It's really difficult to explain all that goes into running a successful business. I think that the highs can be higher and the lows can be lower. That's been my experience. And I do think managing your mindset and your emotions becomes an even bigger part of the process. And before I go, I wanted to read a recent review of the podcast on iTunes. S. Britton wrote, I absolutely love your podcast. You are so generous with your knowledge and I've been able to implement so many of the ideas you've suggested. Thank you. 
Well, thank you, S. Britton. And if you're enjoying the podcast, please head to iTunes, give me five stars, write a review. I would love to read it and maybe even read it on the show. It will help other like-minded entrepreneurs find it and it will continue to grow and I'll continue to get awesome guests. And I will see you here again next week. <laughs>